What's up everybody? It's Sailboat from Sailboat Sneakers here. I got a quick little video for you today. If you're like me and you ship out a lot of packages on a regular basis, you know that the shipping and handling process can be an absolute nightmare if you don't have the right supplies. One of the supplies that I got recently to help with my shipping and handling procedure was a thermal printer. Thermal printers are really great because you don't need to replace ink in them. They just run and basically print off your label on a pre-adhesive uh, sheet that you can just peel off and stick it right on the box. What I found out, however, was that when I was making labels off of eBay and off of StockX, I was not doing a good job of getting the entire label onto the actual sticky portion of the label. It would either come out way too big or way too small. I did a lot of research on Google and YouTube and I just couldn't find any simple solutions. So I had to start messing around with it a little bit. Took me a little bit of time, but eventually, I think I got it down pretty good. So I wanted to show you guys the process here. Let's get into this real fast. All right, so like I mentioned, I've been having a hell of a time trying to print out my stock X labels using my Zebra 450 ZP. That's my thermal label printer. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on the button to print shipping label from the email that was sent to me by StockX. As you can see, you're supposed to print off the first page, include that in the box, and then slap this label onto the outside of the box. Now, if I go ahead and I try to print this off how I typically would print something, utilizing the settings from my Zebra printer, and I'm going to hit print. Now, what you're going to see is it does not print a single label. This prints off this ridiculous half label with the other half of the label over here, plus all of the other information. Guess what? That's trash. We don't want none of that. What I'm gonna do here, I'm going to actually go ahead and click print again, but rather than choosing Zebra Technologies as my destination, I'm actually going to go ahead and change that. And we're going to do save as PDF. When I go ahead and I save this as a PDF, it's going to give me the option of where do I want to save it. And I already have a folder titled labels to be printed, as you can see right there. We're gonna call this one Yeezy 380. I already had another one, we're gonna replace it. Let's go ahead and open up that file. So I already have it right here. And now it's in PDF form. You can see the entire label right here. I'm going to use the editing selection right up here in preview. Once I get my editing screen open, I'm going to come to the left portion and you can see the rectangular selection tool. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose the rectangular selection tool and I'm going to get into my label and I'm going to effectively select my whole label right here. Once I do that, you can use command C or go to edit copy and you're going to copy that. We're going to do file, new from clipboard, and now that will open up just the label. From here, I'm going to rotate it until it's in the correct orientation. Now that I have it up and down, I'm going to go ahead, file, print, and I'm going to do scale to fit, print entire image. Very important that you do that. Otherwise, you will get a partial printing of your label. So we're gonna go scale to fit, print entire image using the last use settings for Zebra Technologies. We're gonna go ahead, print the label. And here you can see we have a fresh label ready to go over to StockX. And there you have it. A little bit of a shorter video, kind of a tutorial, little FYI trick that I learned and I didn't find any information about it prior to me learning it. So something that I had to just learn by trial and error. I hope that this can help like even four or five people out there because it was such a pain in the neck trying to figure out how to do this. And now that I've figured it out, it's working really nicely for me. Don't forget 
that this trick also works on eBay labels. So if you are printing your shipping labels directly from eBay, you can definitely print them off like that as well. I have also used this with labels that I have printed from Shippo before, and that's worked out incredibly well for me. The other site that actually utilizes the settings up front is Goat. If you are printing a label from Goat, you actually don't need to go through any of that process, and it will just print off the correct size right from the email that they sent to you. So thank you guys for tuning in. It's your boy Sailboat with a little trick of the day for you. Take care. I'm out.